Teak Corporation The history of Teak, a Japanese manufacturer of audio equipment and recording systems, goes back more than 70 years. The company is known for its tape recorders, audio players, and professional recorders, as well as computer data storage devices. In the 1970s and 1980s, Teak was one of the world's leading manufacturers of high-end audio equipment, from reel-to-reel -reel tape recorders to cassette decks, CD players, record players, and amplifiers. The company dates back to 1953, when talented aeronautical engineer Katsuma Tani founded Tokyo Television Acoustic Company in Tokyo. The first product was a reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder, released in the year of its founding. A few years later, in 1956, Katsuma was joined by his brother Tomoma Tani and together they founded a second company called Tokyo Electro Acoustic Company to develop audio equipment. The two companies of the Tani brothers soon merged. In 1964, the new unified corporation was named Teak, an abbreviation for Tokyo Electro Acoustic Company. Thus, the name Teak was inherited from the brothers' second company. By the middle of the 1960s, Teak had already established itself as a leading specialist in magnetic sound recording technology. Beyond audio, Teak also realized early the potential of applying its developments to computing. The company began adapting tape recorder technology for computer storage systems. By the late 1960s, Teak had already created its first tape-based devices for storing digital information. This step foreshadowed the future diversification of the business. Subsequently, the data storage business became one of the main sources of the corporation's income. In fact, Teak in its early stages of business development was famous not only for the above-mentioned technologies, but also for special equipment for events. It was Teak systems that were used at the 1964 Tokyo Olympics for slow-motion video replays. Thus, Teak made the world's first VCR for slow-motion recording. In the second half of the 60s, Teak products became popular worldwide. In 1968, the company released the Teak A4010 reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder, which quickly became a bestseller due to its combination of sound quality and reliability. A year later, in 1969, Teak introduced one of Japan's first stereophonic cassette decks, the A20, with hi-fi sound quality. In an era when compact cassettes were mainly considered a medium for dictaphones and portable players, the A20 was groundbreaking in its focus on high sound quality, one of the first steps towards the acceptance of cassettes in the world of high-end audio equipment. Teak also experimented with multi-channel sound. In 1969, for example, the company was one of the first to offer a domestic reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder for playing back four-channel quadraphonic recordings Q4 format. Though quadraphonics did not become widespread and died out by the end of the 1970s, these developments showed Teak's commitment to being at the cutting edge of recording technology. By the late 1960s, Teak tape recorders were highly regarded around the world. Teak's large reel-to-reel -reel decks were known to be particularly popular with American military personnel who brought them home from Japan, helping to spread the brand outside the country. In the early 1970s, Teak made a strategic move into the professional recording segment. In 1969, Teak Audio Systems Corporation TASC, was created within the company to develop equipment for musicians and recording studios. Focused on the rapidly growing music industry, TASC engineers concentrated on creating low-cost but functional recording devices. By 1971, a subsidiary in the United States called TASCAM, an acronym for Teak Audio System Company of America, was founded on the basis of this division. Initially, TASCAM distributed and supported Teak professional equipment in the USA, but the name soon became the brand name for the entire professional line of the Teak Group. From 1973, the parent company integrated the TASCAM brand into its international structure, and all new professional audio recording products began to be released under the TASCAM brand. The 1970s saw a revolution in home recording, thanks in large part to Teak and Tascam. In 1972, the
the company introduced consumer four-track reel-to-reel tape recorders with Simulsync technology that allowed overdubbing during recording. The TK3340 and the related A2340 gave musicians the ability to create multi-track recordings at home, which previously required access to expensive studio tape recorders. These units became the basis for many home recording studios. Thousands were sold until the 1990s. The next breakthrough was the Tascam 88, an 8-track reel-to-reel tape recorder on half-inch tape released in 1976. About three times cheaper than its nearest competitors, the Tascam 88 made multi-channel recording accessible to a wider range of professionals and received excellent industry reviews. Many famous bands of the time recorded demos and albums on this unit. Boston and Kansas, for example, used the 88 for their recordings. The year 1979 brought a completely new concept with the introduction of the world's first portable compact cassette recorder, the Porter Studio 144. This four-track cassette recorder with built-in mixer was a real sensation. The Porter Studio could record up to four tracks on an ordinary audio cassette with simultaneous mixing, ushering in the era of home studios. For the first time, enthusiastic musicians were able to create multi-channel recordings on their own at minimal cost. The success was colossal, with over one million portable studios of various models sold worldwide over the following decades. Bruce Springsteen's iconic album Nebraska, 1982, was recorded on a teak four-track portable. The musician created it at home on the Porter Studio system, which emphasizes the potential of this technology. By the end of the 1970s, Teak had not only won over the audiophile public, but had also established a global network of divisions. Branches were established in the US, UK, Germany, France, Belgium, Australia, and other countries. Teak Corporation of America, TCA, the US division, played a special role in making the Teak brand one of the fastest growing in the US home audio market. Teak products of the late 70s and early 80s covered both the mass hi-fi segment and the professional market. In addition to the multi-track systems mentioned above, the company also produced popular two-track reel-to-reel decks for home audiophiles. An interesting touch of the time, Teak produced CRC-90 audio cassettes with flywheels stylized as miniature reels, resembling the appearance of bobbins. Such cassettes with spools looked very spectacular, and many cassette deck manufacturers used them in advertising photo shoots to emphasize the professionalism of their machines. The 1980s were a period of exploration of new technological horizons for Teak. On the one hand, the company continued to strengthen its position in audio as it moved into the digital media era, and on the other hand, it became a major player in computer drives and peripherals. Teak made a major step in the computer industry with the world's first 5.25-inch floppy disk drive in 1978. These drives became key components of the first generations of personal computers and mini-computers. Then, in 1983, Teak was one of the first to produce a new, smaller drive format, 3.5-inch floppy disks. This format soon became the industry standard for PCs. However, a patent dispute arose, Sony and Mitsubishi accused Teak of infringing patents on 3.5-inch floppy disks. The case was settled by a settlement agreement. Teak paid compensation and license fees, and then continued to produce drives. At the same time, Teak was expanding its line of professional recording devices. In 1982, the company entered the digital audio market, it introduced one of the first consumer CD players and was actively involved in the development of the compact disc. The company paid special attention to the highest class of audio equipment. This is how the high-end division was born. In 1987, Teak founded the Esoteric Premium brand aimed at the most demanding audiophiles. Esoteric's debut devices, the P1 Transport and D1DAC, created a sensation by pioneering the original VRDS, vibration-free rigid disc, technology developed by Teak engineers. The essence of VRDS is that the disc in the CD player is pressed against a massive table exactly corresponding to its diameter, which dampens vibrations during rotation. This design greatly improves reading stability and sound quality. 
The first VRDS player, Teak Esoteric P1, 1987, immediately caught the attention of the audio community. Later on VRDS mechanisms became a trademark of Esoteric and were used not only in Teak products, but also, for example, in professional CD players Tascam for radio stations. Esoteric brand has successfully established itself in the high-end segment, offering players, turntables, amplifiers, digital-to-analog converters, and other high-end equipment. Despite the advent of digital media, magnetic tape remained an important part of Teak's business in the 1980s, but more so in professional and industrial applications. For example, Teak began to supply specialized VCRs and voice recorders for aviation and space applications. Teak's developments were used by the US Air Force, Teak VCRs were installed on F-16 fighters, and modified versions were even used in NASA Space Shuttle program. At the end of the decade, Teak continued to expand its product range, with products for the nascent CD-ROM market. In 1994, the company launched its own CD-ROM drive with 4x read speed, at a time when such drives were just beginning to be standard on PCs. In the 1990s, the audio industry was rapidly moving to digital technology, and Teak and Tascam were actively exploring new recording formats. Cassette multitrackers were gradually being replaced by digital recorders. In 1992, Tascam released the revolutionary DA88 digital multitrack recorder, which recorded eight channels of sound on Hi8 videotape. The DA88 became the standard in the professional environment for relatively inexpensive multi-channel digital recording. For the introduction of this product, Tascam was honored with an Emmy Award in 1995 for technical excellence. Over 60,000 units of the DA88 series were sold through 1999. Other Tascam innovations of those years included a move into new media. In 1995, the company introduced the first recorder to use a minidisc as a medium, a portable solution for field recordings. Tascam also entered the software market. In 2001, it acquired the American software Gigasampler and Gigastudio, Nemesis company, which became the basis for the development of digital workstations in the company's range. For Teak itself, the 1990s were a challenging period. Despite its success in audio, the computer division faced fierce competition and change. The storage market was experiencing a boom in new technologies, with alternatives such as iOmega's popular zip drives appearing. Production in the industry was increasingly shifting to regions with cheaper labor, Taiwan, then China, which intensified price pressure. By the mid-1990s, Teak's profitability had declined, and the company was even recording losses. However, Teak tried to respond with innovations. For example, at the end of the decade, it developed a new high-capacity high-FD disk drive, in collaboration with Sony, four high-capacity removable discs, released in 1998. Although high-FD did not become widely used, these efforts demonstrated Teak's desire to keep up in the technology race. At the same time, the audio division continued to delight enthusiasts. In 1996, Teak released the VRDS Universal UX1 CD DVD player, the first device capable of playing various optical discs using the proprietary VRDS mechanism. The esoteric brand and Teak's premium lineup as a whole strengthened the company's reputation in the audiophile world by offering technically sophisticated solutions at the intersection of analog traditions and digital capabilities. In the new millennium, Teak has maintained its multi-sector business structure. The company has identified three main areas of focus, computer peripherals, audio products, and special purpose information systems. The peripherals category included all types of storage devices, from optical drives to magnetic and flash devices, as well as consumables, discs, cassettes, floppy disks. 
The audio division covered both consumer equipment under the Teak brand and professional solutions under the Tascam brand. The third area, information and industrial systems, included specialized recorders for medicine, the aerospace industry, in-flight entertainment systems, security and measurement systems. In the 2000s, Tascam continued to innovate in the field of sound. New generations of digital portable studios, DP series, combined digital recorders and mixers, and compact field recorders were released. Tascam became one of the pioneers in mobile recording. Since the early 2010s, the DR series of handheld recorders for professional video shooting and reporting has been widely known. In addition, Tascam has mastered the segment of USB audio interfaces, mixers, and other studio peripherals for musicians and sound engineers who keep pace with computer recording. In 2013, the American company Gibson Brands, a well-known guitar manufacturer, acquired a controlling stake in Teak, more than 50%. The deal was seen as a strategic partnership combining Gibson musical instruments with Teak Audio Technologies as part of the Cool Japan initiative. However, a few years later, Gibson faced financial difficulties and declared bankruptcy in 2018. Despite this, Teak announced that it would continue to operate independently, minimizing the impact of Gibson's problems. As a result, the Japanese company retained its brand and independence, surviving a change in its main investor. Today, Teak continues to develop and manufacture a wide range of audio equipment, from consumer to professional. In the mass market segment, Teak offers modern devices for music lovers, compact hi-fi components, such as the reference 500-700 series, network audio players and DACs for high-res audio, turntables, including models with Bluetooth support and digital outputs, cassette decks for lovers of retro formats, CD players and amplifiers. The company strives to combine retro aesthetics with the latest technologies. The professional line is represented by the Tascam brand, which celebrated its 50th anniversary in 2021. Today, Tascam manufactures portable recorders, desktop multi-channel recorders and mixers, audio interfaces for computers, conference and broadcast recorders, professional CD recorders and players, as well as updated digital portable studios, DP series with 6 to 32 tracks recorded to internal memory or SD cards. When it comes to high-end products, the Esoteric brand remains synonymous with the highest sound quality. Esoteric's range now includes CD and Super Audio CD players, DACs, master clocks, amplifiers and even acoustic cables, everything for discerning audiophiles. The price range for this equipment runs into the thousands and sometimes tens of thousands of dollars, but it demonstrates technical perfection. Esoteric engineers continue to improve the famous VRDS mechanism. For example, in 2023, Teak celebrated its 70th anniversary with the release of a special series of the VRDS 701 CD player and VRDS 701T transport with an updated drive and its own discrete converter. These devices reflect Teak's philosophy, respect for classic media combined with support for the latest audio formats, DSD, MQA, and so on. Over more than seven decades, Teak has grown from a small workshop into a global corporation, becoming one of the companies that have defined the development of sound recording technology. Teak continues to create products with attention to detail, serving both music lovers and industry professionals. The history of Teak is a story of progress, combining technical innovation and a love of music, which has allowed the brand to occupy a special place in the world of audio. And so another episode has come to an end. I hope you enjoyed it. As always, don't forget to like, subscribe, and support the channel through sponsorship or the thank you button. It really motivates and helps develop the channel. Thank you to everyone who supports this project.